Hello and welcome back to another deck profile and locals report video. So as you can see today is a Christmas special, a Merry Christmas everyone, um, because I went to play at my locals on Christmas Eve and I'm really pleased to say that I actually ended up topping locals which is kind of crazy. Um, so uh, it was a 10 person locals who played four rounds and um, just a bit of like background, um, feel free to skip to um, the deck profile um, explanation, locals report bit if you want, but basically I, at my last locals about like two weeks ago, I actually went against lots of um, quite like graveyard heavy decks. I went against Tail and Zombie and I got really flustered and I ended up using um, Snake Your Soul um, to special summon um, I think Razen from the deck um, and I just kept getting like ashed and impermed and stuff so much that I actually forgot I still had a normal summon which could have changed the game because I could have gone into more extra deck options and stuff. So um, I felt so bad because I completely forgot I didn't even normal summon um, you know so I felt really stupid after that so I was like you know what can I actually do about it so I've actually gone and built this entire deck on Master Duel by grinding out for gems and I've been pretty much playing like maybe two or three four matches um, on Master Duel every night for the last month or so I'm now um, I bought the gold pass I'm on, on like the level 90 plus on the dual pass and I'm on gold one and I managed to nearly get to DLV 20 so the stage two part of the duelist cup I only got to DLV 19 because I just got a bit stuck but like I put in a lot of practice and I guess um, grinding down um, grinding out my combos has really kind of helped and um, it's helping me to sort of play faster um, by being a master duel because there's a time limit so um, that's kind of like the background to um, stuff and I feel like I have made a lot of leaps and bounds in playing this deck so towards the end of the video I am also going to be talking about sort of some of my top tips for playing VS um, and things that I've learned um, through going through this so yeah so you can see here I've actually made quite a few radical changes and I'll sort of explain it later on so um, I've still got three Razan, he's the most important card in the deck, he is pretty much your one card starter and he searches you any other um, non-warrior VS in the deck, so that's literally everyone else um, that you see in the top row here, this is where all my VS stuff is. Um, I've gone down to um, two um, of the Vanquished Soul Diaolong because he bricks you if you draw too many of him in your opening hands, for example if you just see Diaolong and none of the others you're kind of stuck because you have no way of special summoning him out um, and I've replaced the fire attribute that I've lost with other stuff as you can see later on in the deck. Um, I've got two Mad Love which I think was always the way. I'm actually toying with possibly going down to one of her but we'll see. Um, still the one Pantera um, which can come in handy sometimes um, and the Heavy Borgar still at two. Great burn card um, great to be able to tar uh, bounce out um, your small VS or other VS monsters that have been targeted and still sticking with one Caesar Valius. So that's the main lineup. So 3, 5, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. So 11 um, VS monster cards. And then we've got the support lineup. So the thing is with VS, you want stuff that's going to facilitate you revealing for their effects. Um, and also because your engine is quite small, it means you've got a lot of like hand trap board breaking space. So we've got three Fenrir and one Rise Heart. So this is great because you've got a disrupt here. You get to thin your deck by searching. Plus you also get the fire um, attribute to enable your stake your soul if you didn't have a Razen because that lets you special summon the Razen from deck by revealing uh, Rise Heart. And it also gets you potential rank 7 plays. And as you can see, I keep this little um, thing in the extra deck. So this burns, well, 500 times every... 500 points um, every time um, your opponent activates or a card or effect. Which is pretty good. So this this small package is, is super neat. And it gives you plenty of earth and an extra fire to reveal. Three Ash Blossom, still pretty standard. Two DD Crow because of the attribute. Um, and, you know, there's so much stuff hitting the graveyard these days. It's kind of good to just have. Kurakara... Um, because I guess cash is still around and I think tributing off your opponent's monsters is a pretty powerful effect especially like stuff that can't be affected so for example like purely um, you know or Shangri era you know all, all the cash era stuff um, uh, would, would be brilliant and then because the ban list recently um, as you know has been announced for the new year 
Pancratops is going to be semi-limited, so I thought I'd just try them out with just one. And actually, it's got a lot of synergy because it's not only disruption; it's an Earth, which you can reveal. It's also a rank uh, a level seven, so potentially could rank seven a bit more with it. Um, and yeah, it's it's not like Fenrir where you can't special summon it out unless if you've got stuff on your board. If my opponent has loads of monsters and I've got one, then yeah, I can still get them out. So um, he's kind of cool. So I thought I'd play around with him. Hopefully, planning to possibly decrease this Mad Love to one. And and then increase Pank to two, possibly, but we shall see with ratios later. And you can see here, um, I've got three shifter. Um, this is because, as I said, my locals is pretty graveyard heavy. Um, so I thought shifter would be a good uh, introduction. Again, part of prosperity, it's just like auto include, especially if you're going first, because you want to get to your Razen if you can. Um, that is ideal. Again, rota to get to your um, Razen and the same thing in Fenobra Arms during Dial. So this works even if like you don't have any monsters. So if your opponent's got one, you can just equip it to your opponent's monster and then um, add and destroy this card. Um, Sacred Your Soul, again, another way to get to Razen, but you have to have another fire attribute in your hand. So that would be three Ash, the two Diaolong, the two Kirikara, or the one Rice Heart would all get you to Razen. So that's pretty good. Um, and I find that like there's quite a lot of ash bait in this deck ideally. Ideally you don't really want this to be ash because you're going to be adding an important attribute off this card. So ideally you want to be baiting out that ash with the prosp, uh, the rota, the durandar or the stake your soul. Ideally. Um, okay, and then one of the um, two VS specific cards I play, this is actually really nice and it gets me out of tricky situations. Um, it's essentially a archetype specific book of moon quick effect where if i control a vs i can change the battle position of the vs monster i target and then i can non-targeting book of moon um the same number of monsters your opponent controls as the the number of um, vs monsters i control with different names so it's it's really helpful um it just means i need to remember to special summon my stuff into the right position and then on the similar theme to um Dimension Shifter, I thought I'd add um, two Necro Valley and one Terraforming. Uh, as I said, people play a lot of Zombie Tear, people play a lot of Horus. Um, I think there's been the occasional Bestial and D-Link and there's a lot of Sword Soul and stuff. So I figured some graveyard stuff would be good. And VS doesn't really rely on its graveyard. Um, I'll see if I can show you some like basic combos in a bit. Um, and then not many traps as you can see, so three Emperm. I literally love this. You can see I got it in QCR because it's my favourite trap. It's just so good going first or second. It's insane. Um, and then one of the VS um, Snow Devil, um, which is a great burn card. Um, and it's also board wipe and it protects all your VS monsters. So you can see that I've actually gone down from the two, uh, from, from three VS specific spells and traps down to two. I removed um, VS um, Continue, which just lets you pay 500 life points to either add a VS monster from your graveyard to your hand or resurrect in defense mode uh, a VS monster from your graveyard um, to your field. I didn't find it overly useful. Um, so yeah, I've cut that. So this is, I believe, a 42 card deck, which I don't think impacts, um, you know, the, the starting hand too much because, let's face it, you do actually search a fair bit in this deck. Um, I would say Droll doesn't necessarily kill the deck because you can you can search on your opponent's turn if you've got Xiao Long, so it's not like a huge deal. Um, but it is kind of annoying if you get drilled, but it's not it's not the worst because you can still special summon stuff out from your deck with Stake Your Soul and it returns to your hand during the end phase if you haven't linked off with it. So yeah, um, that's the deck profile um, of the main deck. I'll just show you briefly through my extra deck. So three Rock of the Vanquisher. And I have to say all um, yesterday, I don't think I actually went into anything in my extra deck apart from this. So all I literally played yesterday was these four cards from my extra deck. So this this deck is really not extra deck dependent at all. So if you're going against Cash Tira and they're just banishing stuff from your um from your extra deck, you're not super bothered. Um because most of the power is in your hand. I think like I mentioned on a previous video, the hand the card advantage for um VS. If you want to know how you're doing against VS, don't look at their board, don't look at their extra deck, don't look at their deck, just literally look at their hand. If they've got like one card in hand, they probably can't do much. Anyway, so 
Yeah, three rock. Um, got one SP, little knight, kind of mandatory. Um, I've taken out, I think, Nightmare Phoenix because I felt like I wanted space for this link to instead called Security Dragon. So it's great because I think I mentioned on one of my Master Duel videos, um, you play rock and then if you've got two things underneath, you link Security Dragon and then Security Dragon is actually co-linked with rock. So once while face up on the field, if Security Dragon is co-linked, you can target one monster your opponent control, semicolon, and return it to the hand, which is freaking fantastic. So yeah. Um, I quite like Security Dragon. It's a nice little kind of, I probably can't call it a tech card, but I think it's really neat in this deck. Works well. Um, and then Super, Star Slayer, Typhon, Zeus, Big Boys. I've got the Chakanine Borbo, so I can attack directly with Borbo and then overlay to make a Zeus in MP2 if I need. Got a Baron because very occasionally, because you run the three um, Ash and you've got the uh, level seven Fenrir, you can occasionally make a Baron if you literally have nothing else to sit on. Um, Garura and Mud Dragon. Now, these are two new additions to my deck because I've got Super Poly in my side, which I'll show you shortly, just because there's quite a lot of... Um, you know, annoying stuff like Labyrinth that are just all Dark Fiends that you can Garura into um, via Super Poly. Um, yeah, there's there's a couple of stuff you can do. Um, yeah. And then Nightmare Unicorn, because just, you know, Link 3, Shuffle Back, it's not bad. Abyss Dweller, again, because I'm packing in the Graveyard Hate in this build of VS, because I just think, like, you know, it's all well and good. Like, I, I really enjoy watching, say, like, YCSs and stuff. Um, I love watching high-level competitive play because it, you know, opens my eyes to, like, how people can pilot decks so differently in different matchups. Um, but I think when you're just playing locals, um, you need to think about what people at your locals play because it may not be representative of the meta, for example. Um, okay, side card. So Nibiru, um, I just thought because... People love to special summon loads. I guess it's good against cash. Um, yeah, sometimes sprite, but yeah, they, they have negates. So drawn a lot because people are adding stuff a lot. Super poly, which was my new sort of, I guess, side card um, this time. Soul release because people are playing a lot of graveyard stuff again. Um, so like horror stuff, you know, you can just banish that. And then back row destruction because runic is popular. Um, so uh, and it sort of hits just random decks as well that rely on back row like some rogue decks have a lot of back row in them so that is my 15 um in my side so i think that concludes fully the deck profile bit so let's have a very quick drink mm. yum um it's actually no secco um so it's like prosecco without any alcohol um hope you've got a drink as well before um, we settle into talking about uh, matchups. So like I said, um, it's a it was just quite, quite a small event, so 10 duelists, 4 rounds. So my first matchup was against um, a Kashtira deck with a little bit of odd eyes in it. So I think I lost the dice roll in this one, so they went first and activated like a pendulum card. So I was, at first I was a bit like, okay, they're playing like a rogue pendulum deck. And then they just set two cards and I was like, I don't know what's going on. So um, I think I opened all right, I opened Razen, so I just normal summoned the Razen and I was like, you know, standard play, um, activate effect on summon to search. Um, and then we just built this massive crazy chain because I think he'd actually set um, two copies of this trap hard called, called, I think it's like Mirror Hall of Oaths, where I think you, um, if like a monster is special summoned or something, you can, I think it's like you destroy it and then draw one card or something. So it's clearly Ashable, right? So I chain link three Ash. It's got another one set. So he goes chain link four. And I'm like, okay, okay, you forced me. Like, so I have to use, um, so this is where it's great, where you know what they're trying to target and what they're trying to negate. So I opened with one of these in my hand. So I basically go chain link five, Caesar Valius, um, target Razen to special summon um, this out onto the field and that way because the um, target's no longer there they don't get the draw from from the Hall of Oaths trap card or whatever it's called so um, that was cool and then I, that basically let me go full combo and um, pretty much OTK because you get Borgar burn them for 1-5 if you've got Razen on the field um, sorry if you've got this guy on the field you've burnt with Borgar already that's 1-5 so that's about 4-5 attack um, burn 4-5 and that's 6 um, can't do math, 6-9 or something, I, I don't know. You, and then you just pass turn, you burn them again. So that, that's that's pretty, like, aggro of Vanquish Soul. Um, so game two, I went second. I have to say, I didn't really know what to side for at this point because I'd not seen any of their deck apart from, like, the cash... The, uh, sorry, the Odd Eyes 
um, pendulum random stuff. Um, so I think ironically they let me go first um, even though they lost so I think I had a dust devil set um, I might have had like a mad love it wasn't a great hand but you know I set up what I could because I figured you know if they're playing um, you know something random you know I could just set it um, you know flip it face down or whatever so I think I got that but then I think there was some odd eyes monster <laughs> where it, it prevents I think it's like odd eyes snake something I can't remember it's like this 100 attack tiny performer pal thing and it stops you activating a set card so essentially this was kind of dead which was annoying um, and then they just kind of went cash Tira unicorn and I was like oh I'm playing against cash Tira now um, and then they got birth out managed to rank seven but instead of going to shangri era they went into like odd eyes destroyed one of my things um but i think it was fine because it came to my turn they activated um unicorn looked at my extra deck i think banished the zeus um and i used kurokara to tribute off the unicorn so that was three thousand body but the one thing i keep forgetting oh my god about kurokara is that during the end phase um she lets you target one monster in your opponent's graveyard and special summon it so i could have just targeted the unicorn and i could have banished something in his extra deck um so i i have to keep remembering that because i real life is just not like master duel like there's no prompt you just have to remember things and only you know when it passed down i was like oh like if i'd taken that monster they wouldn't have anything to summon back from the um kashira birth so that would have been really cool but never mind um but i think i eventually did get him down to 1400 life points um he even had the dark some morgan deck, which is a, such a fun card it's like um you can special summon it by banishing one wind and one uh dark monster and your opponent can't set cards so the great thing is like anti-spell and small block uh, which is super fun but that's um off the topic so i won the first um matchup against odd eyes cash Deer, which is cool and then um second matchup i went against um fire kings so i was kind of excited to play against fire kings because i've been watching um like a fair bit of um content online because you know obviously it seems really promising there's loads of like destruction effects and the deck just seems to snowball and trigger in the grave so it's just one of those great structure decks you can just buy three of and play with kind of like the trap trick structure deck um or even the um uh rda one the 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 jack atlas deck so basically i feel like i won this somehow um we did go to a game three um I somehow won this probably because of Shifter um, as well as um, siding um, Cosmic Cyclone and Harpies because my thought process um, with this um, was like everything kind of lives and dies in the Fire King deck by the, the Fire King Island um, spell so that's the one you should try and save your ash for because I think it's the one that stops them getting Garunex the big bird which is like responsible for a lot of the, the new style of how the deck plays so I just wanted to make sure I could get rid of that ASAP so um, I think first game um, so this is where like the the burn element of um, VS is kind of cool because I think first game I got Necro Valley on the field and then I also got um because I didn't really actually have a good opening hand, so I just sat on Red Eyes Metal Flare, burned them a bit with Borgar, and then just let them burn themselves. And, you know, the great thing is that at the moment, in the meta, there's actually quite a lot of combo-heavy decks, if you think about it. You've got Unchained, you've got um, uh, Manadium, you've got, um, yeah, you've got Fire King, um, even RDA as well, um, any sort of Tier Element, Horus, Runic. It, it's all, like, pretty combo, actually. Maybe not in the traditional sense, but you know, they go through a lot of cards per turn to set up their board. So if you're just sitting on this, right? So where do I put it? The Red Eyes Flare Metal Dragon, which literally does 500 to them every time they do any card, activate any card or effect. Basically, they've got 20 moves until they kill themselves. And if you've already managed to burn them for like 15k, uh, sorry, uh, one point, um, yeah, 15, 1500, 1500 on your turn and their turns, so it's 3000. They've got 5000 left, right? So that's what, 5,000? So they've got 10 moves for their turn before they kill themselves completely. So sometimes if I'm sat on a bit of a rubbish board, I just go Fenrir, search Rise Heart, Rise Heart, banish another Fenrir from my deck, make this uh, level 7, XE into this. 
and just sit on that. It's 2.8k and it can't be destroyed while it has material, which you're not going to remove because I'm not playing a Red Eyes deck, right? So I'm never going to special summon a normal Red Eyes monster from my graveyard with its effect. So it's always going to have material unless someone detaches it for me. So um, I did that, burnt them quite low, and then I think they just conceded and then we went game two. Game two, I think, unfortunately, um, I don't think I had a lot of answers. I didn't draw shifter. I think they just had a lot of resources. So we went game three, and game three, I dumped shifter in standby. I don't know why, I just have a habit of doing this in standby. I don't do it in draw. And it was quite serendipitous because I think... Because um, people know that Vanquish Soul, as a deck, does a lot of stuff in... Okay, does a lot of stuff in main phase. So this is something that's important to know if you're playing against it or even with Vanquish Soul, I guess. So a lot of their um, special summon, tag in, tag out effects all main phase only. So Rock of the Vanquisher, you can see it's um, during the main phase. Sorry, I'll try and focus. During the main phase, quick effect, um, you can special summon or add, add from your graveyard. And it's the same with the, the big boys, which as I like to call them. Um... Here you can see it says during the main phase quick effect you can target one non-dragon vs monster you control return to the hand blah blah. And it's the same with heavy borgar as well. Um, target one non-machine um, in the main phase. So you can't do these in battle because obviously it would be broken <laughs> uh, or you've OTK very easily. But um, you can only do the tagging in out stuff in the main phase and special summoning with this. But the quick effects, bear in mind, that come on the main monsters, so it's the stuff where you reveal stuff, that can all be done um, during any phase of the opponent's turn. So I think my opponent, just to stop me from, you know, disrupting them, tagging out, tagging in, I think did a lot of stuff during uh, draw standby. But as soon as I got to standby, I was like, you got anything, you know, and then I just um, shifted. And I think in response to shifter, they started chaining other stuff. Um, yeah, I think I went first as well, because this is where, if I just show you, sorry, a small diversion, if I show you, like, the VS combo, this is why Shifter works great in this deck, as well as, like, Necro Valley. So what you do is, if you start with the, um, Razen, you sort of normal summon Razen, and I don't know, you can add, like, say, Borgar to hand, and then you can sort of tag Borgar out, and if you've got another Earth in your hand, you can burn them for 1500 straight away, or draw another card if you've got Dark. And this way, your Razen's already in your hand, ready to special summon next turn. Um, I'll explain that in a bit, how that works. So let's say you've done, done the Borgar effect, you link that off, so your Borgar's now in your graveyard, and you link into Rock of the Vanquisher. We're only at, like, one, two, three summons at the moment, right? So we're going nowhere near Nib. And then we use Rock of the Vanquisher effect to add back the Borgar from the graveyard to the hand. Okay, so now what we've got is we've got for our next turn, VS Razen to special summon into whatever column they put their monster in so we can destroy it if we want to. And on the summon, don't forget, if you don't have a fire monster in your hand at this point, do not worry because on summon, Razen will let you search a fire monster. So what you go for, you can't search for Razen himself, sadly. You just go for um, Diao Long from your deck and you add him. And that way, because you've got the Borgar in hand, you've got a fire and a dark to pop whatever it is in that column, which works really well. So that's how you must always think. Don't worry if at this point you don't have the extra fire yet, you can add one. So with VS, you just have to remember you need another one of that attribute in your hand because that's going to be on the field. It takes a bit of time to, to, to sort of think about it. And um, not only like have you added back the Borgar to your hand, so the Borgar can protect your Razen if, for example, on summon, chain link one, I want to add something to deck, and then you take chain link two, want to like imperm it or target it with whatever, you can just go chain link three, Borgar, target the um, Razen, bounce it out. You still get the add, you won't get the destroy if you did activate the second effect because it's no longer in that column. But uh, you will at least get to protect this card, which is cool, and make them effectively kind of waste something. Um, but yeah, so you added the Borgar back to hand um, in your main phase of your turn, and now your graveyard is empty. So at this point, if you've got a Necro Valley in your hand, you can you can go ahead and just um, you can slap that on the field um, in re ready for your opponent's turn. And it also means if you've got a Shifter in your hand, when it gets the opponent's turn, you can just dump that because your graveyard is completely empty. Um, so I think that just works so well that you can clear your own graveyard. And then even like later game, if you draw Shifter, like it's not the end of the world, it's six stars, so you can like special summon something and then normal summon the Shifter if you want in defense mode and you just can mess with people sometimes. Um, or you can also use it as an attribute to reveal too. 
So um, I guess that's why these um, anti-graveyard cards work so well with this particular um, archetypal deck. Um, so the thing is with Fire King during that third game, that's exactly what I did. So I think I actually sided in, as I mentioned, so back row. So I had a set Cosmic Cyclone at the time, so it, it will banish a spell trap on the field by paying 1,000. So I shifted already in the standby, and I think they tried to activate like Barong or something, but it, luckily it was in the standby, so they didn't get it next standby because if I'd done it all in draw phase they would have got it that turn. Anyway and then I think we went to main phase and they managed to place the Fire King um, spell because the continuous one lets them place I think the actual field spell and then I just chained Cosmic Cyclone and because like this is an absolute deadly combo for Fire King because if you've got Shifter and Cosmic Cyclone um, in this comma, so you've dropped shifter already, you cosmic cyclone, you banish the field spell, and if the field spell for Fire King, I think, is sent to the graveyard or is banished, I think all monsters on the field are destroyed. But because I played Shifter, it meant they all went to the banish instead of the graveyard. So despite Fire King spell going, leaving the field, they got none of their triggers because of Shifter. So this is like a slightly cracked combo when it comes to beating Fire King. Um, and then I think they pretty much conceded, sadly, um, you know, not, not long after that, because, you know, I could burn, it was coming up to time. Um, so, yeah, I think that really carried me, I've got to say, the shifter and the, the cosmic cyclone side choice. Necro Valley, they, they had ways to play around it, actually, when I used it. Um, so maybe not so good, but yeah, still, still interesting. So, um... Moving on to the third matchup, um, it was like against Meta, so I went against Unchained. And this is actually quite a tricky game. So game one, I think we actually both bricked. I think I drew two Kurokara in my first hand or something, and I think my stake the soul got ashed, and I was just like, okay, I have nothing. Um, <laughs> so I think I just set a VS Dust Devil face down as a bluff, and I think I passed, but I can't remember exactly. I think eventually... I did draw into, I think, a Fenrir, and I managed to make, like, um, again, like, this card, um, Red Eyes Flare Metal, and burnt them a little bit. Um, and I also had, I think, um, it was quite interesting, because I think I had um, a rock on the field, I had a Mad Love um, there, I had the Dust Devil set, and I had the Flare Dragon. I think they tried to destroy the Metal Dragon, but um, didn't realise it can't be destroyed um, when it has material, which is, you know. Um, and then I think, because I think I think I ashed them as well, they played Triple Tactics and, and stole my Red Eyes Metal Flare, which means that I would take the damage now for activating stuff. And they tried to go into battle um, phase to attack the Mad Love, so I activated Dust Devil to change that to defence position and book the Metal Flare. And this is a really interesting rulings question. Apparently, like, the face down card still remembers that it's mine. So at the end of the um, end phase of the turn, the triple tactic stipulates the monster goes back to me. Um, so, yeah, I think it just went back to me, basically. Um, which, yeah, was kind of weird, but yeah, it's good to know what happens in that situation. So even if you book it, it goes, it goes back to you. Um, so I think I did, um, win that one, um, in the end, because I think they had no, uh, unchained stuff in their graveyard and all they had was set spell, set traps. So they had nothing to actually destroy it with, because I think you need to have, a, a, an unchained monster to destroy the, the traps to get going. Um, so game two was again, really tricky because I had to deal loads with the link to, um, unchained soul of Shyama, the, um, blue monster, which is the one that as a quick effect, um, can link using the opponent's monster, which is pretty cheeky. And plus they also had the, um, other, um, one of monster, which they can keep adding back to hand. And when they special summon it, they can destroy one card on the field. Um, so they kept just recycling that and I just had to find ways of not triggering it. So one kind of neat thing that I guess VS does have against, um, has against uh, the Unchained deck is that um, Rock of Vanquisher actually can't be used as link material. So <laughs> if you manage to link someone into that, they can't really use it. Um, 
which means you're kind of a bit safer, I guess. And thankfully, the link to monster that does link as a quick effect has to target first, which means that if you special something off rock, they've got to target, you know, Razen or whatever it is that you've summoned. Um, and then you can dodge that and make it effectively waste its effect. The other thing that I didn't realise with the Unchained matchup is that there is a, I think, is it a link? Possibly a link three card. I can't remember exactly what it's called. Um, oh yeah, Unchained um, Lord of Yama, which came out in um, June. So it says um, you can get a, um, I think, an Unchained monster back out of the graveyard if it's destroyed by banishing it. So there's a way of getting that out. So I tried to destroy it first, um, but then it just came back, which was really annoying. Um, so it was a bit of a grindy game. Um, yeah, uh, I don't think the VS matchup is overall very good against Unchained, apart from the, the targeting dodge, because a lot of the VS effects, the good ones, so Razen destroys a monster in a column and then sees a value, says non-target destroy. Yeah, like, Unchained stuff loves being destroyed, and I have to be honest, like, Mad Love, um, I guess I could use Mad Love more, because she would um, um, probably return a monster with the lowest defense in the field. I guess i got a question for you guys um, that I don't know. Our link link monsters have no defense, right? So are they considered to have the lowest defense on the field? It's a good question, actually. I'll have to look into that one. If you know the answer, please can you like comment below? Because I actually kind of want to know. Does it count as like zero defense, or does it just count as like no defense? So can you return it to the hand if it's the lowest defense? Um, I'll try and look it up later. Um, so I think at one point uh, my opponent had the um, managed to get SP Little Knight into an extra monster zone with Unchained Soul of um, Yama, the Link 2, um, sorry, Shayama, um, beneath it. And then only afterwards did he realise it was a mistake because SP Little Knight, the arrows point both sides, which means that even if he did manage to activate the Link 2 monster to link off with my monsters, there's literally nowhere on his field to link it to because she points to either side. So actually, that that situation I needn't have worried um, is actually fine. Um, so I think, um, yeah, there's also another point just thinking um, in that um, match where um, I think, like, because my rock can only activate in main phase he tried to move to battle phase and i was like okay before battle phase i want to do stuff in main phase and we kept going and then more of his destruction effect blah 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 and he was like okay so main phase two because he'd completely forgot that we were still in main phase one and i guess like i i'm just like a bit too nice i guess sometimes and i just reminded him like um by the way you haven't had a battle phase yet because we're still in main phase one and he was like oh and i just let him smack me in the face for three thousand damage but luckily that wasn't enough for, for game um so i was quite thankful and i and i basically won in time with the game too so yeah that was like a little bit hairy um but thankfully like unchained's not going to be full power um from the new year so kind of thankful for that game four um i went up against runic horus so this is the kind of thing i was kind of preparing this whole deck for because there's quite a lot of people who run horus at our locals so that's why i got the d shifters i got the necro valley and I've got the back row destruction, um, not only, I guess, for the runic fountain, but also just for King Sark, because you just want to get that off the field um, ASAP. Um, so game one, I managed to win it fairly quickly. I think he managed to go first, but he just got, I think, a Horus card on the field. Um, um, so I think it's Horus happy. Um, and the thing is with the Horus cards, they all can't be destroyed, can't be destroyed by effects which do not target them, <laughs> which is actually, again, a really kind of weird thing with VS, because one of the like main pros of VS is that you don't target stuff, so you can actually destroy tricky things, but in this case, they're not going to be able to destroy Horus, so what you actually need is the Fenrir to destroy the Horus stuff, because you declare attack, and then you banish the face-up card by targeting it. So that's what happened, and attack went through, smack in the face, 2-4, carry on with my um, day. So that was kind of cool. Um, game two is a bit more interesting, so um, they went first um, again, and they managed to get four Horus monsters on the field by, um, I think, discarding um, them um, with, I think it's one of the new resonator cards from the RDA um, deck. 
Um, and then I think they use one of the Horus um, cards and a Hugin to go into a um, Chaos um, Angel, so the thing with 3500 3, attack, 2 8 defense, and it's light and dark, so all monsters they control can't be destroyed by battle. Um, and I think um, the Chaos Angel couldn't be, is not affected by monster effects, so you have to get rid of it using a trap or a spell, which kind of sucks, but. More on that later. Um, and then they also just went into the rank 8 thing, which requires three level 8 monsters, called Coach, G Coach King Giant Trainer. And they drew three runic spells, so thankfully I didn't get burnt from that, because they didn't draw any monsters, which was good. But I suppose they use it as a draw engine. Um, so I they did use loads of negates on my turn, but I had enough gas to just keep going. Um, and I guess the key thing against playing um, with against that kind of deck is they're not going to kill you slowly they're going to kill you by um deck out so the main thing you want to do is just get rid of their horus uh, and their fountain as soon as possible so that's why i got the back row so i was quite lucky with that not only that i've also got this so this can target to destroy the field spell and then Pantera, I used a lot more in this matchup as well i used Pantera to destroy the horus um trap um and then also, obviously, back row stuff helps too. Um, so, yeah, I managed to chain Cosmic uh, Cyclone to activation of Runic Fountain. Um, and then I burnt them out with Borger to win in the in the time lead. Um, so the thing is, the Chaos Angel, the way to get rid of it um, in this deck, I think the only way, I think, because most of VS stuff is monster effects, the only thing that would help have helped me is the VS Seldust Devil. I would have just flipped it face down. And then I think I'd have had to use either Caesar Valius or the Razen to destroy it. Because you can't battle into it. Because if you battle into it, it'll flip face up at the da uh, start damage calc. And then its effect will apply that it can't be destroyed by battle. So it would have been like a several card combo. So yeah, probably getting to Mad Love to get this and then, I don't know, some stuff. Um, so yeah, I won that one, which is crazy. So that is my run of four... Um, games with this for uh, matchups with this very sort of anti-graveyard variant um of vs so i guess to summarize like the really um like kind of like key techs in this card uh, in this deck are like the 3d shifter so it's great against like fire king um and it combos really well with the cosmic cyclone and usually like um it you know I, I i guess these kind of are all sort of the same kind of vibe um i'm not sure how helpful it was this locals but i'm sure if there was like a tier player or more branded chimera i you know i would have been quite happy with that um the two kurikara um these ultis are so so gorgeous you can see the foiling on there is just lovely um i really like them because you just it just feels like you've got hope <laughs> in a tricky spot and it's fire again so it's really helpful um for just revealing um and great for for cash Terra, which is still running around the pancratops actually i think it helped a lot because i think what happens with um Yu -Gi -Oh these days is you just need stuff to bait people's stuff once you burn if you can outlast their resources you're good this is like a one card bait if you got this you know you, you cause some disruption get get some of their stuff off and once you do that you go into to, to main board uh combo stuff so i like the one pank i think when it comes to new year i'm going to try and experiment like i said by removing one of the dr mad loves possibly um into the pank here um i just have to be um careful that if you know I want to keep the earth in hand to, for example, use Borgar's burn effect. Be careful just not to get too excited and just um, shotgun that. Um, so, yeah, as I mentioned earlier, I did remove one of the VS spell traps um, because actually I think one of the weakest parts of the VS deck as a whole is probably this. Um, not by itself, um, or as a pack, not by, not as a package, but just if you open with Mad Love, you don't have anything else and you, it only gets you a spell or a trap, which is not really what you need in your opening board. I think she's more of like a, ah, uh, I'm in a sticky situation. I need to book someone's stuff or I need to burn someone or just board wipe someone's stuff. This is basically a board wipe if you've got all three, um, attributes. Um... So I'm actually considering, so I've already cut down the one continue spell because I don't think it was that helpful because um, it brought stuff into defense position. I couldn't even attack with it. Um, it burnt me for 500 if I was, you know, type of time, which is not great. And plus these are searchable. Um, so I actually hated drawing the continue spell 
in my opening hand it was just very annoying because you can't really do much with it and if you set it like you know whoop de doo you just reborn something for them to just kill it like it was not that helpful um so that's why I'm thinking of maybe going down to one mad love and if I do it won't really affect my ratios too much because I've still got the two DD Crow and I think I'm going to be sticking with the three shifter so and I've got the two Borgar so I'll have plenty of stuff to um what's it called um reveal I guess the only thing is it might make my rank four play slightly weaker because I do run the Borbo uh, the Zodiac package into into Zeus um, but an abyss dweller. But to be fair, I've got other level four stuff. I've got Rise Heart, which won't stop me X Y Zing. I've got Panthera, and I've obviously got Razem. So I'm I'm not too fussed. I think I'd rather go for like more consistency than having that extra um, option. Um, so, and also, um, I all of these monsters I have used their second quick effect so razen's reveal fire and dark for destruction Xiao long's reveal two fire to search any vs card panthera i have used definitely come in handy the destroy spells and traps in a column by revealing earth and fire uh borgar for sure both of them like jaw by revealing a dark or burn by revealing a fire and earth and definitely definitely the caesar valius is like just pop any card without targeting it is absolutely crack like i, I love this card um but to be honest, like I don't really use Panthera's quick effects. They're not they're kind of underwhelming. The last one can be good in niche situations where you can reveal a dark and an earth to like non-target return the monster on the field with the lowest defense. But these days a lot of monsters have more than two thousand defense, rendering this card effectively useless. So for those reasons I am tempted to actually remove one of the mad loves, unfortunately. She's a cool card, but sadly just not really chunky defense wise enough they should have made her like 2-1 or something a little bit higher if they want to do that um okay um and then like Kashtira package like i'm absolutely keeping this it's just like so um it's not gonna be touched for at least a couple of months like it's been it's just so versatile especially in tcg versus master duel because in master duel you're only allowed two fenrir so if you draw both fenrir in your hand you kind of you it shuts you off from your x xyz seven play um because you have to have a fenrir on the field special summon the rise heart and banish a fenrir from deck so if you drew both it's dead but in tcg because you've got three fenrir you're probably not going to have drawn all three in your opening hand that would just be really unlucky so this is great so you could you've got rank seven plays which is amazing um which I used actually like two or three times um, at locals um, and then the rise heart is great because obviously it's a fire attribute to reveal off the stake your soul if you don't draw any Raza in your opening hand which is brilliant um, uh, yeah so and it's also possible to do this play so if I just show you like um, so if you've got like Raza in your hand and you've got um, a Fenrir it's it's really good because you just special summon the Fenrir, you search the Rise Heart, keep the Rise Heart in hand for now, normal summon the uh, Razen, you search for another attribute, so you search for the Ziaolong, and now you've got two fire in hand, which is optimal, because what you're going to do is reveal the Ziaolong you just added um, to activate Razen's first effect, you special summon the Ziaolong, you link off with the Razen into the rock, you rock to add back the Razen, and now look, you've got two fire in hand to reveal for the Diaolong. You add any VS card you like from your deck your hand. Usually at this point, I would probably add the Borgar, um, just because, you know, he is just... just uh, or you can even add this guy, because then you can add the Panthera on your next turn, you've got another pop, which is actually pretty good. Um, and then only at this point, so at this point you've done what? One two three four summons so okay if you want to push your luck and you don't think you're going to get nibbed at this point you summon out special summon out the rise heart and here you're locked into xyz summons which is why it's important to do the razen set up the rock and the long bit over here first and then you go um rise heart banish a fenrir from your deck make it level seven top three of the opponent's deck goes as well and then you rank into red eyes metal flare so what what you've got is you're burning your opponent 
right? Um, you know, like I said, instead of adding this, you can also add this to your hand. So you can even like tag out at some point during their turn and burn them for another 1500 on top of this. And you got Xiaolong to add another thing. So if you added this, you can add Panthera in your in the opponent's draw phase. And now you can probably um, activate Valius if you need him. Um, and then you've still got Rock as disruption to special summon out the Xiaolong. And I guess the good thing about sorry, special summon out rather than the good thing about having the Valius or the Borgar in your hand going into opponent's turn is that if they normal summon something into the same column as Yao Long, right, um, they're trying to, like, stop you from summoning to the same column, but what you do is they go chain link one, whatever effect it is that they want to do, if there is one, and you just chain Rock of the Vanquisher um, to special summon the monster from hand, and if they've got nothing, then you chain link three, okay, reveal heavy Borgar, um, and then it resolves, so... The, the the ordering is really important here um, because it resolves backwards you remove the Xiao Long back to your hand you tag it out with one of these two and remember special summon it in a different column because you want to block yourself and then it will resolve backwards to rock special summon and now you can go in the same column as where your opponent went it's really important to get the order right of the um, of the chaining because uh, otherwise, yeah, it's kind of awkward. Um, so that's a really nice board you can set up um, with Rock, Xiao Long, and Red Eyes Metal Flare. But unfortunately, it will take you over five summons. Um, so if you just want to play it safe, um, the four summon route is Razen, um, uh, probably Fenrir, um, Razen, Xiao Long, um, Rock, four. So you just stay on that, and which is pretty good anyway in itself. Um, so I guess that's kind of like a summary of how I found my sort of tech, um, as it were, and just a few like combo demonstrations and why I do things that I do. I guess like, um, some of the tips of playing Vanquish Soul that I have at this point, I've kind of skimmed over already. So like Xiao Long is great because he can add two twice across turns if you have two fire in your hand. Um, so, so often I'd have like this, um, or I'd have like Razen and the Kirikara or something like that. Um, so don't underestimate the effect of Xiao Long, but obviously if you activate him in draw phase, you do, um, or if you, if you um, activate him on your opponent's turn, you do risk um, getting a triple tactics there, but hey. Um, and, and remember that in the same vein, Caesar Valius can give you basically two free pops across a turn. So you do it once in your turn and then an opponent's turn in their draw phase, you do it again, which is great. Because um, your hand's probably not going to change that much between um, the uh, main phase two of your turn and the draw phase of your opponent's turn, right? Um, so the other thing that I wanted to um, go into was um, if you have a bad hand where you can't do the Tiao Long thing and add, you just do the combo I showed you at the start where you go into, um, where you go Razen, um, add Borgar, link into Rock. Oh, sorry, Razen, add the Borgar, tag out, do some stuff with Borgar, link with that. The Razen's already in hand and add the Borgar. Because there's still a way to get Borgar out because you're going to use the rock to special summon the Razen and then you'll tag it out. So that that's what I would do if I had an inverted commas bad hand, <laughs> um, is the play I'd go around. But ideally go for the Xiao Long play because he just gets you more card advantage, which is exactly what VS lives and dies by. Um, and um, yeah... The, the way the way you, you have to think about it as well is that Xiao Long can get you anything, whereas Razen will only get your monster. So let's say it's your turn and you already got like nearly the trifecta in your hand. What I mean by the trifecta is you've got fire, dark, and earth. What you can do is you can go for Snow Devil if you're, you've you got a nice array already, because remember you can set it on your turn, and then on their turn you, you add whatever you want. But if you don't think you've got that, then it's probably safer to to go for Caesar Valius uh, during your turn, for example, and then during your opponent's turn, get the Panthera. Get the Caesar Valius first, because in case they try any funny business, at least you've got something to tag stuff out with, and you can get the Panthera later um, using, I don't know, Dialong or, or um, Razem. So I think that's it really for now. Um, I know this was kind of actually a longer video than I normally make, but I hope it was a bit more comprehensive um, and went through a bit more of the deck in slightly more um, technical detail. 
Um, I guess if you have um, any like comments, feedback, um, I'd be really interested to hear um, what you have to say and like your own experiences, either playing with um, the deck or your own builds or any other kind of tech you think would be really helpful and some stuff that I could even try at my next locals. Um, I'm hoping to keep grinding out on Master Duel. Um, uh, I hope you can check out some other videos on my channel of some of my Master Duel replays where I'm also focusing at the, uh, this point in time on um, this deck VS. So it, my deck in Master Duel looks very similar to this, apart from the fact that I haven't got the D Shifter and Necker Valley because this is very locals based. Um, but yeah, so uh, I hope you enjoyed that. And if you really did, I hope you can like this video. Uh, and show your support for me, um, you know, it made me um, really happy to see that and if you really liked it please do visit my channel, watch my other stuff um, and subscribe um, as well. So hopefully I'll be back soon with some uh, more videos, um, I've also got some other playlists for VS if you want to check them out, so yeah, I'll catch you on the next one. Have a good Christmas!